What should we do? So let's talk about Encyclopedia Britannica. What was the value proposition of encyclopedias? Pretty simple, all the information you want at your fingertips. When I was a boy, you had to go write a report. First place you went was the library, pulled out the encyclopedia. You got enough information to get yourself good well started on any kind of report you wanted to do. Has that value proposition been made irrelevant? If anything, it's more true today than it was before. You know, I used to be able to ask a question and actually wait a day for an answer. You know, I didn't feel like somebody had to give it to me in five minutes. But now my anticipation is going to be very, very, very quick. So the value proposition is as strong as ever. Now, if they were born, these encyclopedia companies were born with that value proposition, what happened? Because the value proposition is still very strong. Well, let's think about what actually happens in a company and in a board meeting. Lloyd, what's the biggest employment in an encyclopedia company? Sorry? Sales? You know, it would seem that way, except they outsourced it. If you don't remember, what happened was there were a few district managers, and those district managers went to the schools, and they would say to the school teachers, look, do you have very bright children? Will these very bright children in your classrooms benefit by having their own encyclopedias? Why don't you go tell the parents that? And if they buy an encyclopedia, you get 20%. So the sales force was actually primarily teachers, other forms of educators, and librarians. So it wasn't the largest uh, employer. So now if it's not sales, what do you suppose is the largest employment group in an in encyclopedia company? Okay, I heard research. It takes a lot of energy to create the first encyclopedia. How much does it take to update it every year? Pretty small, right? So it's not research. That's actually a group of about five, six people. So, huh? Publishing, printing, right? Actually making books. That's what we do day after day. In fact, if you look at the cost structure of our company, it's heavily dependent upon all the elements of book binding, right? It, back up here. All the elements of book binding. Everything from buying paper, a very, very small change in the price of paper dramatically affects our profitability, to page makeup, to printing, to binding, and all the things that go into that in distribution. So what happens at a board meeting? Well, this is where most of our people are employed. It's where most of our resources go. It's the number one thing that impacts our profitability. So we talk about printing. And we become experts at printing. And we get lots of presentations about pulp prices and future pulp prices and, and the price of paper and any new technologies that are related to book binding. Those become the nature of the conversation at our board meeting, right? How much is talking about new technology? I'm just talking about changes. So what happens is new technologies come along like automated page makeup systems, right? And these actually are first adopted by the encyclopedia makers. They take this in because it lowers the cost of making books. They can automate the page makeup system. And that actually goes to PCs, so they become early adopters of personal computers, again, because it helps them be very successful at lowering the cost of making books. And then they find out that CD-ROMs and high-impact drives and all these kinds of technologies help them even better to make books, because now people in the field can type things up into their computers, send them in, and it's pre-formatted. You dump that into the page makeup system. I get rid of a lot of typesetting. So I continue to add and use this technology. I can ping the CD-ROMs in. I can get lots of illustrations off the CD-ROMs. I can keep making better and better and better books with all this new technology. Because after all, that's what I do. I make books. Right? See how simple it sounds? That's at my core. Now what happens is the PCs come along, they go to mobile. Of course, mobile leads to uh, PC and the internet leads to the online sites, which leads to eventually the search engines. Remember Ask Jeeves before we had Google? And then, you know, all that combines into the Wikipedia, and pretty soon I'm irrelevant. I'm irrelevant. So what brought this together? Are we doing things right, or are we doing the right things?